What up with you, Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. I'm in New York, baby. I'm in Krista Stefano's palace, and I'm excited to tell you about my guest this week is Margaret Cho. I love Margaret Cho. Historically uh, respected and widely loved all over the globe. She's so very funny. Please go check her out live. And next week, Tuesday, the 10th, my special Cheeseburger comes out on Netflix. Cheeseburger on Netflix. Please watch it. Spread the word. Let everybody know. Also, Bad Friends are touring. We're touring uh, in... April and May, but right now we only have three dates up. We're doing Vancouver, Spokane, and Seattle. Go to badfriendspod.com, badfriendspod.com to get those tickets for see me and Bobby touring. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers, oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It is the first time this human's been on this show, and wow, are we happy. It's Margaret Cho. Hi. So quiet. Hi. <laughs> and uh, for listeners, you won't be able to hear this. Maybe you should click over on YouTube because she's got her pup, Lucia, sitting promptly on her lap. Lucia. A Lucia. Where does the name come from? Uh, well, her name is uh, Lucia Caterina, which means clear light. Clear light. And uh, she uh, yesterday actually was St. Lucia's Day -uh. in Switzerland. What does that mean? Um, well, Lucia, I think is um, she is a Catholic saint. Whenever you see somebody holding eyeballs, I believe that's Santa Lucia. That's Santa Lucia. Yeah, she's like. Um, and you're of course Italian. I don't know. Yeah, but she. Yeah, I'm very late Italian. It's actually Ciao. It's <laughs> Ciao Bella. Ciao Bella. Margaret Ciao, Ciao. Bella. Um, but it's, uh, I, th I think that's what the saint is. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know anything about it, but that's what I think it is. But uh, she's also named after Catherine Deneuve. Katerina. Oh, Katerina. Oh. So she's, this is kind of like a royalty pup? Is this like she, a fancy? She isn't. Um, is she from she's a bloodline? No, she's just from like a city shelter. Same. My dog is too. She's just from the city pound. But she's really a good girl. A pound pup. Actually, I lie. Ours isn't from the pound. Ours is from the streets. Oh. We got one of them street dogs. Oh. Street dogs. Bacon yeah. wrapped. She's oh. from my buddy's girlfriend from a long time ago uh, who became a good friend of mine. And she, out of nowhere, posted this picture of the pup and was like, found this pup in a garage downtown where I get furniture made. And the guy said it uh -huh. had puppies and the mom went somewhere to go because they got sick she got sick oh. and he was like i need someone to take these and she took one home and the one she was like we can't foster any more animals does anybody want this dog mm. i was like bring that dog over to oh. my house. and i even said i was like look we're gonna sleep on it we need one night to decide <laughs> never left dog never left i mean it's so when once they come in they're in your house they're in they're yours it's over yeah she's the, my only dog i have many cats you have a lot of cats. Mm -hmm. What are we talking? Let me guess. Three. 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 Was I right? Yeah, you're three right. Three was right on the money. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, three's, well, I mean, but they're self-sufficient. So it's what it's not, I think three cats is like one dog. Yeah. Three cats, per, for, one dog is like yeah. three cats of responsibility. Yeah. Because they do their own shit. They mind their own business. You need to like take care of them, but you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Like you can go out of town, go on the road, do shows. Yeah. She comes with. She comes with. The cat's got to chill. But the cats have uh, a cat sitter who comes and stays and it's really, it's really great. It is cool. Well, how about this? I know people, and I'm not going to call out someone I know, but they, they have a leash. They walk their cat. Do you walk your cats? Yeah. You do? Um, well, I have, um, only one of them will accept the harness mm. and he, um, He's the most uh, scared, but when he wears the harness, he looks like, again, back to Catholicism, he looks like a priest because it looks like a clerical collar because it's black and yes. it's got a high neck and it's really, um, it's giving Vatican. Vatican you know, it, vibes. It's given 
uh, not Monsignor. It's giving like deacon. Oh, yeah. It's more Protestant, I guess. I was just going to say, that's not Catholic. But yeah. you need to get a little swinging bell with smoke <laughs> for the cat. That would be funny. So hi, cute. hi, hi, hi. So cute. Oh, it's impossible like to not play with dogs, though. Well, I probably stink like my dog because we were rolling around this morning in the yard. Yeah. And big fan of rolling around in the yard. First thing in the morning, that's all she wants to do. It's nice. We love rolling around in the yard. It's really nice. It is sweet. These things do. I, I mean, I talk about it. Um, I talk about it in this special that I'm putting out is how my dog genuinely like. I mean this. Like changed my life because I. I, I just needed something else to like uh, take away some of my anxiety energy. Mm -hmm. So when I'm a little annoyed or the business is heavy handed and I get frustrated, mm -hmm. if I just go for a walk with a dog and go get coffee and just kind of leave my phone somewhere, mm -hmm. it definitely does. It's like my little, you know, I don't can't remember. What's the anxiety drug everybody takes? It's my... Uh, Xanax. Xanax, yeah. Dogs are my Xanax. It's a good, it's a good, uh, she's a little white pill she's a, little, she's a little white pill she's a little white pill of a dog and she's i can't take helpful. pills anymore right no more pills you're my only pill <laughs> we're not having anything to drink today because you are no booze you're you are sober, sober which is good yeah for how long um this time uh almost seven years oh that's a long time yeah that's a really yeah. long time but i've i've had varying degrees of sobriety over my Long life. So, Did you do yeah. California sober ever where it was like... Yes. Yeah, and that's a big thing. Yes, I was uh, green and sober. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For a while. But that doesn't really work when you're doing dabs. Dabs, you get a little bit too high. Dabs are so psychedelic. 100%. Yeah. And it's just, I don't think it's wise for me to have a blowtorch, you know? Not for drugs. And also the gravity bong, which is really strong. Yeah which it just pushes the smoke down into your lungs. It's like very, and the edibles nowadays. These kids today. These kids today. Off my lawn. <laughs> with their kids. shatter and their dabs and their nails. But at least you're hip with the lingo. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like you're still in with the cool kids. You know shatter, that's big. You know, tincture? I'm, st I'm st tincture. Um, I, I still, you know, uh, shop at the Bape store. Hell yeah. And I still like, I love any kind of stoner or anything. Like I wear all Bape and Champion and um, very into the look, but I just don't, I, I, I mean, I just have so much brain damage, but comedians love weed. Yeah, we do. We do. You know? I like, I'm a, I'm a, I was more of a weed guy for my 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. And now I've kind of stopped, uh, m almost all of it, I've stopped. It's, I still like having a couple of drinks, but I just, she wants to play so bad. She wa she Get up there. She wants to play so bad. I think, you know why she might be having uh, excitement is because there was three dogs in here the other day and they probably oh. are all over the carpet. It was a three dog night. It was a three dog night. A three it was a three dog, dog night. night. It was three dog night. Was Come Jeremiah on. a bullfrog in the three dog night? Yeah, Jeremiah was here. <laughs> he was here. He was a bullfrog, a bullfrog and he was here. So She's for, for, really going for, crazy. For people that don't know, obviously they um, are not aware of reality then because you've been doing comedy for a, a long time. 40 years. <gasps> Is it really 40? 40 years. Isn't that crazy? <gasps> this year. Oh, goodness. Lucia. 40 years you've been doing comedy. I've been doing comedy for 40 and years. And this is, a, and, and I'll say this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kiss your ass just a little bit. Um, you are, the word legend can sometimes feel like a little, I don't know. I don't know. I, maybe it's. it sounds like when someone says they're proud of you, it's almost diminutive, but they don't mean it that way. <laughs> like legends like, oh, legend, what am I? I'm not dead. But it's nice. You do have a great legacy in comedy, Thank and everybody you. that is a stand up knows mm -hmm. you and respects you. Yeah. And I do think you've done so much for so long. It is extremely impressive because a lot of people either fall off, mm -hmm. they go away, you know, or they become super famous and then they're just like, they don't have to do comedy, which is great too. Like, that's kind of another arena of comedy, or not that they don't have to do comedy, but they just choose to just do stadiums. Yeah. <laughs> they just choose yeah, sometimes you to... choose to sell 22,000 tickets you know who do really well everybody who's ever opened for me let's name them um uh russell russell peters he's um, doing okay he's doing arenas he's, yeah yeah um yeah. jim gaffigan he's doing okay um mike berbiglia he's doing again these are three guys that are doing okay <laughs> 
doing great. No, they're doing phenomenal. They're, they're doing like phenomenal. The top in their game. Like, um, so that's kind of like. Um, so you have the magic opening touch. For some reason, everybody who I've ever worked with that's open for me is like he, uh, Karen Kogarev. What are, you <laughs> what are you just making all stars? What are you like a coach or something? You're... No, I just happen to like be lucky and like. Get to work with people that are just really, really talented. You pick good talent. Is obviously you have a good eye for what you think is, or just happened. You know, like uh, I didn't know uh, Mike Berbiglia, but he just ended up, ended up opening. It was like you know this thing of like oh, and then um, Russell I didn't know, but I worked Yuckex in like the early nineties. Yeah, and he was just like there, and um, so you know I got lucky there. But that's to me like the most impressive. The people that I. Um, or Jonathan Van Ness. Jeez, what are you doing? I, you really do have a unique, become, you want to work at the agency someplace? <laughs> they become so famous that like they can't, uh, they can't hang out. They're too busy. No, they're not. That's not true. <laughs> I don't buy it. They can, Jonathan Van Ness, you better pick up the phone, call Margaret soon, start hanging out. All right. You're he not that busy. He used to do busy. my hair. He was my hairdresser forever. Really? And yeah, he he's Before just, he was on the show? Yeah. Wow. But he's too famous now, which is great. I'm really I'm really grateful for all of their success. It's very well deserved. Well, who, what's the Gaffigan story? How'd you link up with Gaffigan? We worked at the now closing Caroline's. I know, rest in peace. I just saw that uh I think they said how many years? It said 50 years. Am I crazy? I don't know, but it's a long time. It said online. I can't remember what it said online, but yeah, that was the first place I played in New York ever for the New York Comedy Festival. Well, I I never got to go to New York and play anything because I when I was too young to even get into the clubs, and then I played the New York Comedy Festival, and that was the first venue I ever played in New York was Caroline's. Mm -hmm. Really nice. So daunting though, as a young daunting. comic, it was like, you know, it's it's t Times Square. It's like. You're just a little overwhelmed by the fact that you're like, this is the center of the thing. This is a historic club. Mm -hmm. Like the cellar was less daunting for me because it's more intimate and mm -hmm. you, the, the 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 cultural history of the cellar is intimidating. Yeah. But it's so small mm -hmm. that once you get in there as a comic, you're like, oh, this is like, this is where I shine. This These little beautiful well, yeah. rooms. Yeah. It's like the East Village and it's really, it's very cool. Is that, or is it West Village? West Village. West yeah, Village. West Village. Yeah, yeah, it's West Village. How many, I don't know. Um. I don't think I've ever actually done a set at the Comedy Cellar, which is weird. What? I know, that's so weird. But I've done very, like, limited sets in New York. Only, like, Caroline's... Um, Did you ever do Catch a Rising when that was there? Yeah. Or Dangerfields or... Not Dangerfields, but I used to see Rodney Dangerfield in uh, the Laugh Factory in a bathrobe, <laughs> like... He was living the persona yeah. in a in a full bathrobe and pajamas. Was it sad? No. It was cool. It was just normal. Because that's borderline. That is there was like a 50-50 split on that being like, that guy is that guy okay? It's definitely borderline, but it's also like totally it was totally normal and cool. Like yeah. you know, um I used to see uh, Milton Burl who um they would do the, this is like before the roasts were on television. They mm. would do the roasts in the club in Beverly Hills, the Fires Club. Right. And uh, God help you if you park in his parking space. Oh, that don't, you better, you, you, you better not. don't. You better park, don't. You better don't. You he better had the most don't. beautiful wife. Um, he was probably in his like late 70s, early 80s, something like older. She may have been in her 40s. Um, she was like a, Really tall. She looked like Jerry Hall, like you know, um, Mick Jagger's wife, or, yep. Colin, or Rupert Murdoch's wife. Oh yeah, you know, like um, the model from the seventies and eighties. Thin, tall, thin, smokes. tall, blonde. Yeah, long blonde hair, but Always up and up. Looking down at you a little bit. Yes, with a, fur, a like a fur stole. I don't know if I, I mean. I think it was probably real because it was the eighties or nineties, and um, yeah, he uh, Milton Berle cut a cut an impressive figure. Mm -hmm. um, as did Bill Hicks. Yeah. I opened for Bill Hicks. You did? In the, in the 90s, yeah. How did that come about? He um, was always so late to the show. Like, I would, you would just get assigned. You, you, you know, at that point, like, you would just get assigned as an opener. Yeah. So I didn't really know him or anything before, but um, you just got assigned him. And he, he was always so late. He would come a second before he'd go on stage. And when you're an opener, you, I have no material. I had done all my material. And I'm like looking at the door, like, and I'm trying to, 
I have to bring them up, the, you know, the feature's done and I've got to go back up and I've got to like kill 30 seconds that I don't have of material before he mm -hmm. comes on stage. And then he's suddenly there. Would you just do crowd work at that point or no? I didn't know what to do. I didn't know yeah. how to do anything. Right. I was so scared. How old were you at this time? Like 15. What? 15 or 16. That's when you started, when you were 15 years old? I started when I was 14. You're nuts. How do you like? How do you even get into it that age? Because I had a comedy partner who um, is also very famous, Sam Rockwell. Yeah. He uh, and I did a duo act, which is so weird to think about now. But you can see some of us on you. We're on YouTube. You and Sam Rockwell doing a duo act when you're 14 <laughs> when and we're he's like 14. He's like 14. 14, 15. Yeah, we were super young. How did, and what? How did you link up? We uh, were in a comedy class in school. We had an improv teacher uh, who would sign us up for sets at, at uh, open mics at night, which I think is actually, now I look at that and I'm like, that's so ballsy mm -hmm. to do that. But she was very um, progressive and uh, we're still friends now, but she uh, would sign us up. Um, us, uh, Aisha Tyler was in the class. I love and her. She's great. She's great. Yeah. So we would just go and do uh, these shows at the other cafe, which is a very famous comedy club in San Francisco, where I would go see Paula Poundstone all the time. Yeah. And Dana I, think I've, I think I've heard of it, the, <laughs> the other cafe. Yeah. Yeah. It was a big deal in the 70s. Yeah. It was the hot spot. It was the hot spot where you would see like Robin Williams on any given night or, you know, all sorts of different like the San Francisco people. And, and then did you play the Purple Onion ever? I did um, when it uh, reopened because it had closed, I think, it was big in the 60s and then I think it closed for a while and then reemerged at some point in the 90s. Because it was like a jazz bar at one mm -hmm. point. Or, yeah. But similar to, I guess, the Comedy Cellar, sort of like that uh, village kind of s scene where it could have been like poetry, it could have been right. folk music. All the beatniks, all the troublemakers were there smoking their drugs, that, making art. But not doing rails or dabs. No, no Or with the gravity, no, no gravity bongs. No gravity bongs. No. If you could go back, uh, was there any of those ingestibles with weed that you did enjoy? Or at some point you were like, I don't like any of that stuff. I like the espresso beans. Oh, yeah. I think they're the Kiva espresso beans. Kiva, that yeah. Were, were like the little uh, chocolate-covered blueberries. Mm -hmm. Those uh, Because they're a little bit more manageable. Um, more mellow. They're mellower and there's like... Because sometimes you will just... The dosage is always really off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because it's not, there's no regulating body. Right. And I think the marijuana is probably, um, you know, the, the cannabinoids are naturally occurring. So you can't necessarily fully control, at least at the point when I was doing it, you couldn't fully control how much THC is actually in every batch. And I how think. your body processes it. I think that's like right. the big uh, thing that's not communicated is like, you know, I think they were saying that... Uh, I watched this thing about how like ingesting or s smoking weed in a traditional way, um, the way your lungs kind of process it, um, it's a lot easier and more manageable to kind of balance the amount that's going into you based on your intake. But if I take a 20 milligram, you take a 20 milligram, the way our digestive tract works, the way our body processes those things could be mm -hmm. remarkably different. Right. It could go slowly through your system. It could smash me all at once. Mm -hmm. So that's why I can't take edibles because I end up sitting in the hotel room staring at my socks and like not having a good night and thinking and about all the wrong things. Super nervous about whatever. Like it's just the weirdest high. It's yeah. not even a high. It's, it's like a, a, it's a low. It is a low. You're out of body. It's out of body. I remember I ordered food in St. Louis. I got too high. It was my buddy. I went back to the hotel room and I was like, I'm just going to go to bed. But I knew I wouldn't go to bed. So I ordered food. And mm -hmm. when he brought the food, I had a panic attack about him coming in the room with the food because they had like a cart. Oh, yeah, so yeah. So I was like, just leave it outside. He's <laughs> like, you have to sign. I was like, leave that there. I'll sign that. You can come back. I'm naked. <laughs> and as I'm saying it, I'm like, why are you scared of the... It's food scary. delivery service. It's like the paranoia. Yeah. It's the weird. Imagine he's a cop. We know. The, the, the paranoia of, I don't even know, but I think uh, comics like marijuana in general, mostly I think for me, I was trying to fall asleep in different places. Yeah. So 
it was easy to fall asleep when you had weed. Without using, like, I've tried Ambien before and uh, melatonin never works when I'm on the road. And this is terrible to say, but like sometimes I would take some NyQuil just because I know it would do the trick. But mm-hmm. I, but it's definitely not good for you to take NyQuil at that degree. Yeah, I mean, I think any any sort of um, thing, though, that would help you fall asleep would be helpful. But one time I saw this comic, I'm not going to mention his name because it's so embarrassing, but he carried around his pillow. Mark and- Marin, We know it's you, Mark. <laughs> Don't hide from us. We're not. And we I know it's like, Mark. It's such a good idea. But I would never. It's embarrassing. It's like, what do you like on your like, it's very like junior varsity. <laughs> yeah, the bus, bus to another school. Yeah. You're going, you're going to play in the like, the like the final, like whatever. It's just very, it's very sports team away, a high school. Yeah, away game. It's an away game. You got to tuck that in the overhead compartment and you have to ask politely if you can put it up, if someone's bag and you're like, can I sneak my pillow up? It's just... And then you're like, like holding you 40? your pi- yeah. You're like holding your pillow. It's a little weird. It's so, Im- but it's actually like a good idea. But yeah. I'm like, I could never. No, the embarrassment is higher than the comfort level I'll receive from the pillow. <laughs> the, I'll, I'm, I'll pass on I'm the comfort. So, I like I'll take the. Em- I don't want the embarrassment. <laughs> it I, was. It wasn't Mark though. What does Mark travel with a pillow? <laughs> no, but I want to put the rumor out there that Mark does. Guys, everyone at home, Mark Marin travels with a pillow and a little blankie. And a little rabbit with little chewed up ears. He'd be, he'd be so annoyed to hear this. Um, and I'm going to call him after this and tell him that I, I heard that's what he does. In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. Hey, I'm not a fan of uh, old, big, boxy dress shirts. Uh, my dad's golf shirts and dress shirts, I always hated that. And that's why I'm a big fan of Mizzen and Maine. Mizzen and Maine has sent me a bunch of different varieties of, of different shirts. And my the golf shirts are actually my favorite. But um, if you're someone who likes comfort and style, wants to, wants to look just as good in a meeting as out afterwards having drinks, Mizzen and Maine uh, are the inventors of the performance fabric dress shirt. It's incredible. They combine the comfort and flexibility of your favorite athletic wear with the fit and style of a custom dress shirt. Lightweight, breathable, and moisture wicking. That's huge if you're a sweaty petty. Miz and Main's clothing will have you looking great and feeling great. They make really comfortable dress shirts that you really have to try to believe. And truthfully... Um, it's impressive. I, I did think, you know, there's all these different companies that are coming out with new kinds of dress shirts. I've tried all of them. I'm not a huge dress shirt guy to begin with, but these are so comfortable and stylish, which is a big thing for me. A lot of times there's such a big lack of style. Um, and I love Miz and Main. Their golf shirts are truly my favorite. They're so comfortable and the fit is incredible. Uh, if you want them fitted, Miz and Main makes wonderful stuff that you can wear on the course, at the office, out for drinks, or just kicking it at the crib. You can look stylish. So, if you want the best cold weather clothing this holiday season, check out Mizzen and Maine. Right now, if you go to MizzenandMaine.com, use promo code WHISKEY, you're going to receive $25 off any regular price order of $130 or more. That's $25 off when you go to M-I-Z-Z-E-N-A-N-D-M-A-I-N.com. Use that promo code WHISKEY. Did you know that property crimes like burglaries and package thefts spike over the winter? That's because the holidays are there and they know what Amazon's dropping off. All right? That's why now is the best time to secure your home with award-winning home security. Simply Safe is the new security system I recommend to everybody. Make it your resolution to start the new year with greater peace of mind and safety for you and your family. Here's why I love it. I got to tell you, Simply Safe sent me a box of uh, all the tools needed to keep my house simply safe. And it's no wonder they were awarded Best Home Security System of 2022 by U.S. News & World Report. It's a third year in a row. Three-peat, baby. Uh, it's a whole home security system. Advanced sensors for every single room, which is great. Windows and doors. Um, HD security cameras for inside and out. Smarter ways to detect motion alert. Uh, and even hazard sensors that detect fires and floods. Threats all over your home. Or the shakes out here in Cali, bro. Uh, top ready, Simply Safe app. You can stay in complete control of your system anytime, anywhere. Armor disarm, unlock for a guest, access your cameras, and adjust all your systems all from the comfort of one app. And I gotta tell you, it is incredible. Uh, they sent me all the materials, and Simply Safe makes such a great system. It's beautiful. It's simple. It's easy to set up, even for a dum dum like me. And I promise, uh, you will like it. Keeping you and your family and your loved ones safe, especially over the holidays. Come on, can't put a price on that. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com/whiskey. Simplysafe.com/whiskey. You can go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off your order with interactive monitoring. Come on. At simplysafe.com slash whiskey. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Ginger. I like gingers. Uh, pardon the ignorance, 
but are you the first Asian American with a comedy special? Yes. Period. Period. I imagine so. Yes. I was like, I was thinking about it and I, I looked it up a little bit. I was like, was there anybody else that maybe snuck by that I just didn't know? Maybe Pat Morita, but I don't know if he did a special. I don't think he did a special because Bobby and I have talked about that before. Yeah. Because you know my <clears throat> my sweet little best friend Bobby Lee and I. Who, uh, um, who ha has he done a special? Because he really should. No, and we've he talked really about should. it for an endless amount of time. And I got to tell you, the problem with Bobby and specials, and I do mean this. I think this is something mm -hmm. that fans can relate to as inside baseball as it can be. Some acts are inherently so much stronger live. Mm -hmm. And they think that their product will be diluted by taping, which I it does sometimes. And mm -hmm. I think he genuinely believes that taping will dilute his performance. Well, I... I'm not saying me, but I think that's what he thinks. I think that it, you know, whatever that means is really... Uh, but at least it would be great to have a record of what he was doing at a certain time and mm -hmm. then a record of what he was doing at another time because he's just so spectacular as an artist. I so. agree. But he, I've, I've begged him for years. I've known him now for, you know, I don't know, 12, 15 years or something. And we became friends when I first got passed at the comedy store and... You know, I was just a nobody trying to walk my way in and he was always so good to me. I mean, I was always, we would always talk years ago. I was like, why don't you just throw a tape together? Someone will buy it. I mean, this is also back when, you know, YouTube wasn't a thing. No one did that. But I was mm -hmm. like, Comedy Central will give you a, why, why? And he's like, no, 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 they won't. You're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. You're too young in the game. Oh. But I was right. Yeah. I knew I was right. Yeah. But he kind of passed it off as you don't know what you're talking about. Mm. But I don't know. I, I, I do understand over the years now that I've been with him for so long that I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe it's also because he just loves the live. I mean, I liked I, Leno had an article that was written in. Um, I think it was like GQ or something. You, you Google it, but it's he was they were asking, like, why don't you do a special right now? Mm. All your peers of your age range are doing them. like Romano put one back out. Seinfeld right. put the hits back out of the, mm -hmm. the old jokes. And Leno was like, I really love live comedy. I want you to come see me do it live. Yeah. And I don't feel the need to. So I kind of said that to Bob. I was like, maybe that's what you love is like some comics just obsessed with live. They love live. Yeah. The, the tape is a weird fear, I guess. Well, it's also like um, the lighting is different. So then it makes the audience react differently. Mm -hmm. So then you kind of are judging your own performance by what it's felt like before. And then it yeah. feels different. And I know that it's never going to be as good it is, as it is sort of like when it's an unexamined kind of moment when it's very spontaneous. Yeah. A lot of times we put so much um, effort into things and then it, it sort of doesn't s sort of feel as uh, immediate and electric, but I still think it would be great for him to have a record of what he's doing over certain years. You know? I know we should just privately film him when he's not paying attention. Yeah. That's what I should. I've thought about doing that. <laughs> I've genuinely I thought about hiring a documentary crew behind his back. That's a good idea. I know. And and the good thing is he'll never hear this because he doesn't watch this show. So it's like I can just say this openly and no, it'll never get back to him. <laughs> yeah. But no, he. But I had said that to him before when him and I spoke that you were the first Asian American with a special mm -hmm. in general. Yeah. That's an that's a that's a really do you ever feel that? Like does that ever hit you? Oh yeah, yeah. I think it's great. I mean, it's really um It's monumental in the comedy world. Like how many It's great. It's crazy to me. It's really exciting. But it also, you know, now what's so exciting is there's so many fantastic Asian American comedians, which sure. is really 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 special. But you were first. I was first. And you guys better fucking remember that. That you <laughs> she was first. No, and there they are. They really do. They really do. People are really very um you know, uh, very effusive in their praise and, you mm -hmm. know, admiration. And, and so I, I'm really, 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 really grateful for that. It's cool to be a pioneer of something like that in our mm -hmm. world because it mean it does mean something to us because we all, I think the one thing that I hope will continue in the world of comedy is like we do tend to have a pretty high level of respect for those that were before us. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's always going to be that way, but I do think it was embedded in like my generation's culture. Yeah. And... It was a, it was a thing. Be also because specials for us when we were young were such a fucking big deal. Like yeah. I remember watching them and taping them on VHS and watching yeah. them back, and that was such a thing that I don't know if the new generation of twenty three year old comics that are humming along. I don't know if I don't know if that's a thing for them. But I think 
it will. I yeah, so. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. I think that there is like some, there's a legacy uh, tradition in comedy that we uh, always really, I think, I guess, enjoy and respect the elder mm-hmm. in comedy. I do anyway. And you I think do. that's just, that's just the way it you is. You never know with these kids and their shatter. You don't know what these dab heads are <laughs> with their up sh- to at the babe store. At the babe store with their man. shatter in the um, but it's very like uh, I mean, yeah, it's impressive. I I'm always really excited to see like young comics because it's just like oh, I can see sort of traditions repeating and things like because comedy in a way is kind of always the same. Yeah, you know, there's it a is. sort of irreverence to it. There's a sort of like revolution to it, and that the feeling of it is always kind of going to be the same. Right. Well, anyway, I, I just wanted to, I wanted to say that I thought that was very impressive when I was, yeah. when I talked to Bob about it, that I was like, what a, what a monumental feat. Let's talk about who you are now after all these with years. With Lucia snoring underneath? Can you hear? She's snoring. Her? She's snoring. Wait. No, she's, now we've she, now, now we now we woken, woken her up. Now she's, now she's. What's a day in the life for Margaret Cho? Um, you first wake up. What's the first thing you do when you get out of bed? The first thing I do is I take her outside, um, and that could be really early. Uh, the other day, this is a few days ago, we were outside, and she was pooing, and in the yard, and there was a, a coyote right next to me. It's been happening in L.A. a lot. And it was like, the coyote was just standing there, and I like turned to look at the coyote. I'm like, oh, you, oh, Really? <laughs> oh, is this what you think I, you're gonna? I said, "Oh, really?" And then <laughs> that's your response. Then the to coyote that. ran away. Oh, really? But it, coyote but it was right next to me, like yeah. not scared. No, they're ruthless now. They don't care at all. And looking at Lucia like she's a snack, which could have been one hundred percent. That's a little biscotti right there. Like a little that's delicious a almond snack. biscotti, yeah. like white mm. chocolate dip almond mm. biscotti. But the coyote was just standing next to me, like, "Oh, you're gonna eat that? I'm gonna." If you're not going to eat that, I'm going to eat that. Like that kind of thing of like the coyote's like trying to come over to me. If you're not hungry, I'm starving. Yeah. So I'm going to eat that dog right now. So it was very shocking. And then, um, so that's usually what I do. She and I have to, we have to go out to the yard together. Right. Well, now j- just bring your gun. I know you're a big gun girl. You got all sorts of guns. <laughs> just bring your guns with you when you go out there. And I, they do say you're supposed to <clears throat> get big, get loud and and flail at the coyote so they'll run away because- in my neighborhood, I get the alerts uh, twice. Dogs have either gotten bit or perished from coyotes. Oh. But it's usually because they're at night and the dogs are out in the yards at night and the coyotes are able to yeah. get into their yard or whatever. Yeah. Um, which I think about all the time with the dog. We have a full fenced in yard, but even still, I guess they can get in. But I go out with her anyway at night and her in the morning. Well, out of fear. They were, I, we were, we, I, uh, I was just outside of the fence and she was in the fence yeah. and then the coyote was next to me outside the fence. So the fence is actually probably scalable for the coyote. Oh yeah, they can. Yeah. Yeah, that's nothing for them. But it wasn't um, in there yet. And so, but I usually go out with her. So that's what I do. The first thing I do is uh, go out with her and then I have to feed all of the animals. Yeah. Um, uh, because one of the cats has uh, a She's kind of bulimic, which is kind of weird. So she'll she like an eating disorder. She'll she'll throw up whatever I feed her, and it's not a any sort of illness. She's just got like some weird. She was a runway cat for years. Something weird. You're a model cat. You just you know, that, you know that doesn't go away. She's on the catwalk. She's on the catwalk. You know, <laughs> she's just really self conscious. So she's start, like, so I have to like um, sit there with her and make sure she eats everything, and then just sit and like hold her for a while. So the like the feeding thing is kind of a lot, and then I clean, and then I'll sit on my VR. Um, oh, are you big into VR? I'm into VR. Is it Oculus? Is that the one you use? Yeah, I my use buddy Metacrest. Chris bought me one, and it's yeah. wild. It gives me motion sickness. Yeah, I like I like sitting down when mm-hmm. I do it, and I'm okay. But I've done the one where you stand up and draw the boundary. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of stand up VR. It's hard. I want to sit down. It's hard. Yeah, and then I'll sit in a game, and I'm like, I cannot figure out what's going on here. I'm just going to sit here. What, like, game, what game do you play in there? I play, um, I will Beat Saber, which is just a silly fun. I've seen that. That's a fun one. Yeah. And then I play uh, 
Bone Lab, which I fucking do not understand. I'm just Bone stuck. Lab? I'm stuck on the same thing. What is Bone Lab? Bone Lab is like, I don't even know because I'm stuck on one part and I can't get out. So I'm just going to be, <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's never going to happen for you. I'm trying to walk up a ramp and I, I haven't been able to do it for like a week. Um, That's but the I, first thing you have to do and you're like, it I'm just, not. I can't do it. For worse, you get killed. The, the thing about Bone Lab is you get, you get executed. Oh, cool. that's, that's the first thing. And then you go, you escape the execution and then you get, get into like a tunnel and then you're, you have to run up a ramp. But I, and that's just the beginning. And I'm just, that's where I am. I just got like almost like lynched by this mob. It's like you get, you get, you get in a noose. Is this a Quentin Tarantino game? What it's is, a this very, is, this is like a, it's so a very playing Reservoir Dogs. Uh, Django. Yeah, it's a Django game. Unchained. It's game. all his movies put into one. The Bone it's, Lab. It's really. Uh, I mean, I I could never figure out why people would watch people play games, and now I realize, oh, I need to because I don't know what's going on. Like Twitch and all that stuff. Yeah, people watch so that they know. Oh, that's how you get out. Do you see how hip you are? You got shatter and dabs, and now you're watching video games on Twitch, and you're now, both here. <laughs> You, you couldn't be I, you should do it why don't you know what you should do you should twitch stream you poorly playing bone lab really just staying in one place and screaming about it people um, watch and it's really funny because then all of the cats are on top of me and then her lucia just so that i have like i'm under 50 pounds of animals oh, trying nice. to play that's your uh blank that's your blanket that's your weighted blanket that's my weighted blanket is all of the animals um and uh, yeah, so then I'm, or, or I'll go on the road. Those, and those are the two You're things. big on the road next year, right? Come 2023. Yes. You're humming along. Yes. Well, are you, now, this is interesting because you've been in the game long, you know, like, was there a point when you like went to these bigger venues, like theaters, and then you went back and forth? Like, do you, or you do commit to like one, do you like, will you only play clubs or will you only play theaters? Or no, you, I'll do anything. You don't care. I'll do anything. I mean, I I'm really open to whatever it is. You sure. know? I love clubs and I love theaters. I mean, they're all they're all great. And whatever I am, you know, welcome to do. I'm I'm so happy to do. That's nice because I well, like I just made my foray into theaters in the last couple of years, and like, you know, sometimes theaters are daunting, and you're like, man, it'd be nice to just run the old club vibe because mm -hmm. it's such a dif different rhythm of a weekend, you know. Yeah. And I do <clears throat> not to say. I'm, I wouldn't do any. It's just sometimes you'll get into like this, oh, well, the, this city wants you in this little, you know, cute, great little theater and then this and this. And, you know, there's moments where I tell the team and I'm like, I, I kind of want to just go to that city and do their club because I like their club so much, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But it is, once you graduate there, you've wanted as a young comic for so long to get to bigger venues that when you do, I think sometimes you realize the smaller ones are also where it's so, some of the gold is. It's you know? so great because it's like, you're able to sort of stretch out and um, kind of figure things out and uh, you have more more freedom to do that. Totally. But then you also have the tech spot, which I think is hard. You know, the tech spot is like the 10 minutes before you're about to finish as a headliner, where everybody gets their bill. Yeah. It's very tough. It's weird. It's awful. <laughs> it's almost like they should just save it to the end. I've said this to a couple of times. I've done this where I've said, we'll just do a shorter show yeah. so you can save it to the end so you can flip the room for the second show. Yeah. And they hate doing it. The mm -hmm. owners of the clubs hate doing it and the managers always complain. But I'm like, it just makes for a better experience for me and for the audience, in my opinion, because yeah. the audience doesn't want to be doing this looking down while they're, what did you, and then what is it? Should I leave? They don't want to be doing that while they're really enjoying you yeah. as well. So it's almost like, just give it a minute. Just give it one minute and it's then it'll... It's a little tough, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. I know. Look, from an organizational standpoint, you know, whatever. But it's also just that that's always the hiccup. Yeah, the check drop is just such a bummer. And then sometimes it's like, it's like what that, that thing about um, Steve, what Steve Martin said, like, why did you quit stand-up comedies for... Friday Night Late Show, mm -hmm. which I actually actually like Friday I Night like Late. I like Late Shows. I like Late Shows. I like when it gets really um, rowdy. Loose. And loose and crazy. And, um, you know, there's no more fist fights. There used to be fist fights. The good old days. <laughs> which I, when people like, would just gonna, break out into fights. What are you going to get in a fist fight? Yeah, come on, audience. Show? When are you guys going to start beating the shit out of each other again? It's really, um, that, that to me is really funny. So I think... Um, yeah, so there's none of, not, you know, there's none of that anymore. But as I get older, um, 
But I think, uh, yeah, it, those those nights are kind of intense. Well, they, I also, I also, Steve said, I read that book, uh, Born Standing Up, and I think the thing that he said that also impacted him was from a fame level. He was like, at some point, I, he was uh, he was talking about that. It was at a show, and people kept yelling out King Tut, like King Tut. King oh Tut. yeah, yeah. And he was like, like my bits became more important than I was, or something. I don't know how he worded it, but it was something to the effect of like. They weren't even there to see me. Mm -hmm. It was like they were there to see something else. And it was kind of a detriment to what he wanted to do. It was like, well, then fucking I'm not going to just be right. a, a, a record player for you to hear your favorite hits. Mm -hmm. So I think he just didn't like that feeling anymore, too, is also what took over. Well, he was so famous. So famous. I mean, you know, because off of SNL and the characters that grew because of it and then becoming a movie star... This is a tough world to continue to do stand up yeah. in. Like yeah. Kevin can Kevin Hart can do it because Kevin does fucking arenas and that's he loves that thing. I think he loves that vibe. Those are hard. I I've actually opened for him and it's really hard I think to have that many people, you know, at oh, yeah. like you know, 50,000 seat arena. It's really hard. Yeah. I mean to uh kind of go in there. I mean not just as an opener, but I think just for any comic. That's tough. It's it's it's, it's a, I did them. I did a few arenas. Mm -hmm. Um, he op opened opened for Rogan on like a few different occasions, and it was very nice. It was cool experience to be able to go do that, but also, um, you know, you can see people in the in the lights of the hallways going to the bathroom and going to like concession stands, and you're like, yeah, it's, this is crazy. It's so crazy. I was doing like rock shows. I toured with um, Cindy Lauper and uh, with uh, like Joan Jett and um, all these sorts of like big uh, rock, of rock, yeah, yeah, rock like the B fifty twos. Which um, Margaret Cho <laughs> come into the stage now? No, they they are so funny. Um, yeah. but the the it was just so big that I was really I had a hard time. Well, and they, were they outdoor venues too or no? Yeah, like Red Rocks. Yeah. I can't. I don't. It was I so can't. hard, and there's no oxygen yeah. in Red Rocks. Right, you're way up. It's so hard. Every I mean, joke, I, you're taking a big breath. I'm like, <laughs> and uh, I, I gotta. I, I, but it's um, you know. It, it, people who are good at that, it's a really special talent. Yeah, it's impressive. Look, it's very impressive. I, you know, like I'm always blown away by, you know, Bird just did Red Rocks for his special, and that's incredible. I mean, I, I just he, I was um, never good at those outdoor venues. Yeah, he. That's right. He did. Yeah, he did. Red, yeah, it's Red it's Rocks. hard. Yeah, it's so daunting. It's I, so hard. Yeah, I don't. I I don't think I've ever. You know, I shouldn't say never, but I don't know if I'll ever get to that point. Even if I do, if I really want that that level where it's like you know 50 you know thousand i had i had gabriel i had fluffy on here and like you know i was at dodger stadium i was like yeah. dodger stadium well how do they hear you and he's like trust me they hear you i was they like i get you. it but it's so far away so big yeah that's like beatles level it's fucking nuts of excitement what would that be for you what would be like a is there was there ever or have you already done a pinnacle venue for you that's like i always wanted to play this thing and i did it Maybe Carnegie Hall. That's sexy. Which is cool. That's so cool. That was really good. Um, and um, yeah, like Radio City Music Hall, those kinds of things. Yeah. I got kicked out of um, Radio City Music Hall uh, with another very famous person who I'm not going to say oh, who it come is. On. But she and I, she made a bong out of an apple. Cool. And we were, and she's so famous that I was like, we're not going to get in trouble. And we got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> they locked busted? us out of. They, we got in trouble. They locked us out of our dressing rooms. They kicked us out of the venue, but we still had to do show. So we still had to perform. Wait, they didn't let you smoke weed in the in the dressing rooms? No. So we got kicked out, but we still had to do the show. So it was like we got kicked out before the show, <laughs> and it was really funny because we were just sort of like outside. We had to be on the bus, and just then sitting and waiting to go on. Yeah, just sitting and waiting to go on. We couldn't go inside the venue. How weird! Isn't that funny? Wait, but so, but just because they thought that was disrespectful to the venue or something? I don't know. There's no way people haven't smoked in there before. Yeah, but we got kicked out, and she was so famous. I was like. That's fucked up. They're not kicking her out. It's They're, Helen Mirren, she, by the way, for everybody that's listening. It's Dame Judy Dench. Dame Judy Dench was there, <laughs> ripping apples, smoking that good, good, that fire, that gas. <laughs> that's insane to get kicked out of your own fucking show. In here, we pour whiskey. Well, hello, fresh. Hey, man, I'm so bad at cooking 
It's embarrassing. I don't know what to buy. I never know what to get from the grocery store. I'm a dumbo. Uh, but I got to tell you, HelloFresh, it's amazing. You get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal rep- recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Uh, you can skip those trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Ain't nobody better. Ain't nobody does it better than HelloFresh. They do a great job. I do love HelloFresh. I got to tell you, um, I do love pre-portioned stuff because I don't have all the measuring things sometimes. And just tell me what to do. I'm good at that. Just tell me what to do. Tell me where to go. Tell me how to make it. And then I can make it. I don't want to guess. I don't want to get creative. Just lay it out easily. And they do that. You can choose from 55 plus weekly options, including pre-portioned high quality ingredients picked at peak ripeness. They deliver these fresh uh, quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week. You can savor the summer flavors right from home. Uh, You bust out the grill on a warm evening, and they got uh, the cookout collection, recipes like uh, Melty Monterey Jack Burgers. You know I like that stuff. Um, Skip those trips to the grocery store because this is a one-stop shop right to your front door. You can customize your favorite dishes with Hello Custom by swapping out one of the protein sides for another, upgrading for a more luxe experience, or even adding protein to a veggie meal to make it your own. It's 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant. We know that's facts because restaurants are expensive lately. And it's even cheaper than a grocery store. Uh, That's money back inside of your pocket, my friends, okay? So HelloFresh, you got to give it a try. If you've never done it, you really should. I really enjoy it because I don't like cooking and guessing. Just show me what I'm supposed to make and it does taste very, very good. Particularly if you're, uh, you know, you're doing it for yourself or just for you and your partner. You know, if you got just a couple of ewes to feed, why not? You know, you don't gotta, don't gotta go to Costco. Let HelloFresh do it to your front door. Send it over. Um, go to HelloFresh.com slash Whiskey16. HelloFresh.com slash Whiskey16. Use the code Whiskey16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Whiskey16. Use the code Whiskey16. Uh, HelloFresh, it's America's number one meal kit. Ginger. I like gingers. <laughs> That's insane to get kicked out of your own fucking show. Yeah. That's bonkers. Yeah, it was really funny. And then you're, and then there's that balance of like, your the rep is there, your promoter, and they're like, look, I don't know, it's not, I can't, I don't know. Yeah. The it venue's was, rules. It was, um, it was like just this thing of, you know, we just kind of felt above the law, but we were really not. Never. It was funny. They're going to get you. Yeah, they'll get you. So, so for now, you, you think you've played the ones that really hit the mark for you is there anything in the future that you'd want to play i would love to do um um madison square garden shit that's something that i've never where are you from originally uh san francisco right so why new york's is is so big to you um i think just because that to me is like you know the pinnacle i mean there's definitely big places in san francisco that i've gotten to perform like you know uh the Symphony Hall, Louis M. Davies Symphony Hall, and um, the different, um, and the Opera House, and the different venues there, or the Palace of Fine Arts and stuff. You know, the, yeah. there's great venues there too, but, um, and here, uh, probably the biggest place I've played is, I guess, uh, the old um, Universal Amphitheater. Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's a good big. one. Yeah, that is very cool. That's a good one. But New York just has that thing for you. Like, from I'm a Chicago kid, and I got to play at Chicago Theater last year, and that. Oh yeah, that's great. It was just so big for me because it is as a big. kid we would go there, and you know, I not often, but I went to go see a few things there as a kid, and I was like, this it's just it, it that to me was probably, um, I don't know if there's another place that I that that was a big big deal for me. It's a very big deal. Yeah, I it's loved a it. very exciting. Um, place it's like a really it's a gorgeous theater um when i played there the most exciting thing um harold ramus came to see me no and he so cool uh was like in the meet and greet line and it was like a a couple of years before he died and i'm such a huge fan of his you know like stripes and ghostbusters and everything you know just amazing and so it was really exciting um, to meet him and talk with him. And he was just uh, showing me a bunch of pictures. And I, I was just, like, so amazed. Um, so I always, I always love those Chicago guys like him. And Yeah. 
John Cusack. And yeah, so cool. <laughs> so cool. Isn't it cool when people come to see you sometimes that you're like, you, they're they're a fan of you, but you're a fan of them and you kind of don't feel that the fanship matches up. You're like, why I'm are like, you seeing me? Yeah, like, what are you doing here? Do you better go home? Yeah. <laughs> don't you have somewhere to go? <laughs> like I did I did a bit bit part on um on this Christopher Guest show called uh Shit. Family Tree. And uh I, I loved him. I've always been a guest fan. Yeah. And <clears throat> I don't know if this was on his doing, but just one night at the improv, I walked into the improv like, you know, a month or two after we had filmed, and one of the door uh employees was like, Do you know Catherine O'Hara? <gasps> and I was like do, what do you mean do I know do I know who she is and and the the door person was like I, she's here to see you I guess and I was like what wow where That's and then incredible. they showed me and I was like I wanted to say hi so bad but I was so nervous yeah. to be like hey I heard you came to see me I, it was so weird but I but she did and then I said to the sound booth uh, person I was like um just tell me if she likes it you know like tell me if you can see if she's enjoying it because mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to see in the dark and then when my set was done, uh, I went back to the other bar and then I had asked and they were like, she, did she, the moment you were off stage, she left with the person she was with. I was like, oh, and he was like, no, no, no. She, they were loving it. They were having such a fun Aww. time, but she wanted to just kind of get in and get out. So yeah. I was like, it just, those were that, those little moments. Sometimes you're like, this is so cool. What a fucking that cool That is gig. super cool. Well, cause I think she's just, you know, top She's tier. amazing. Pretty I mean, cool. it's hard to say, but like. I think that the SCTV people are really top dog, man. They are, I mean, like Eugene Levy. And yeah, yeah. Catherine yeah, every, everybody I mean, from that crew, Harry <sighs> Shearer, like everybody is a yeah. Just I don't know. That incredible. was that was more up my youthful world of comedy. Uh, I that's kind of the stuff that I saw the most, you know, growing up. That I thought was like super wacky and fun. I like the wackiness of it. I guess. I guess because yeah. it felt very like. Uh, um, Monty Python esque, where it's just kind of yeah. wonky and goofbally and and just, but also super believable. Oh yeah, too, yeah, and just ridiculous. I love Andrew Martin and I love Joe Flaherty and um, Dave Thomas. Yeah, Dave Thomas, super super funny. So funny and Rick Moranis. Yeah, of course. You heard he got attacked, by the way. Yes. Who's that was who's so punching? Sad. Who's punching Rick don't, Moranis? What are you doing? Don't punch him. Don't punch Rick Moranis. There's so many other people to punch. I mean, you know it. It's so sad, but it, it it's um also uh kids in the hall, yeah ah oh, yeah so good. Who I that love. Say, that brand of comedy was so that's kind of what spawned, you know, in my ignorant opinion, stuff like Tim and Eric and stuff like that kind of spawned oh, this so like good. new generation of that kind of free flow, uh, char really character driven, you know, sketch stuff that I think is, and not to say missing, but. You know, we could use more of, we could use more in a serious time where the world is kind of uh, a little bit bummy. I yeah. think more wackadoo nonsense. I wish more wonky stuff popped up. But wackadoo, like, oh, this was like 12 years ago when I, I was still drinking and I was with um, t uh, Tim and uh, Neil Hamburger. Mm -hmm. We were doing a show and you know, Tim does that stand up comedy character. Yeah. It's not. His comedy, but it is. It is, but it isn't. But it's, it is, but it isn't. Yeah. It's really like it's a it's a statement on comedy. Yeah. But it can really make people mad. And um, we were at this venue, and um, we were drinking, and the audience, um, like Tim had done a set, and there was some kind of altercation, and the audience like chased us up to the dressing room, and so that we were just like up there. They were going to kill us because they were also kind of pretending that they were like the kind of audience that would kind of come see a comedian like Tim's character. They were and it was, inside the bit. It was so inside of the bit. And and we were also, it was like sort of like this alcohol-fueled nightmare of like comedy as satire and satire folding in on itself. Oh my God. But they were like banging on the door and... um it it was a, a a real like altercation. There was like Were you scared for a minute? I was scared for a minute. I don't know how we got out, but um it was really it was so like them taking the character seriously but not. Mm -hmm. It was so it was kind of like the um Tim and Eric sketches where the audience is like 
all those weird dudes mm -hmm. from like the um, <coughs> well, from Craigslist. I don't even yeah. know. Like, where just are get them off the street. Yeah, who, but they're all, central casting. They're all men. Yeah, it's all dudes. <laughs> all dudes it's all men all weird dudes and they're all like kind of in their 50s and 60s and 70s and it's really strange a couple of nudists are always thrown in there always yeah. and they, yeah they like they like the people that uh <laughs> have always wanted to be on tv but never got to that's who yeah. gets to be on those shows so bizarre yeah so bizarre but in a in such a great way where you're like uh the reactions are usually like overacted and over the top, and <laughs> and it's it is beautiful to watch how how much they like get into it. You're like you couldn't teach someone to do that. No, it's so surreal. But then that that kind of thing also happens in life. Yeah, it does. It's you hard know? to it's hard to replicate that though. To be like, can you do that? If you showed like a trained actor, be like, can you do that? They'd be like, you, I don't know. That's kind of yeah, tough. You can't you can't specific. recreate it. You can't. You it's hard to embody that kind of. Uh, uh, honest anxiousness where you know what I mean because they're like it's it, it looks fake sometimes that's like my favorite kind of comedy I think is like any kind of Tim and Eric uh, audience focused um, sketch yeah like any of their Christmas special sketches yeah yeah and that kind of stuff or or um, or even Steve Brule so good. that is really good too for your for your wine what got you what was the last moment that you got off the sauce where you're like, I don't want to do it anymore? Were you on the road? Were you touring? Oh, I was, um, no, I was actually forced to do so by my uh, friends mm. who uh, kidnapped me and forced me to go to a, a birthday party, but it was actually an intervention. Wh really? Yeah. So it was, unfortunately it was not my choice, but it's probably but, better. But it was needed. <laughs> so it was a fake birthday party, not for you. No, it was, uh, and it was not my choice to go. <laughs> you were like, I'm not, I don't want to do this. I was in, I, I ended up going and then um, they took me to a treatment center and I, I stayed there. For, I stayed there for about a year and nine months, which I really liked being in rehab, but then people kept dying, which is really sad. In rehab. In rehab. Because a lot of people um, like, you know, when you're in that situation, being in rehab is kind of like being in hospice mm. where people are really on the last legs of life, like their last chance. Yeah. And it's sad because it was like really young people, really successful, really beautiful, really with their entire lives ahead of them died. Jesus. Horrible. Is is usually is it from because they relapse and they do too much? That whole they they'll they'll do like uh fentanyl. It's mostly fentanyl. Yeah, what the fuck is going on with fentanyl? It's, I guess it's, it's everywhere. I, don't know. I got out uh, just in time because I would be so dead. You retired before you could get, get hit. Well, because, I mean, I uh, like to take drugs and then ask what what it, what it, what it is after. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me what this was. Like, what is that? It's already inside of me, so I'm just sorry, just me. let me... What, uh, you know, so it's not... Um, yeah, I don't. I don't take drugs responsibly. <laughs> it's kind of fun though. I'm not saying do it, but also that's you're gonna do it. You know, I'm kind of like a, I'm like a real like I'm an old school partier in the um, you know, very very classic sense of like let's you know what let, let's I'm up for anything, but the, the problem is is that my body isn't necessarily built for that, so it's not good. I don't think anybody's is really. No, nobody's is. But do you have any? Uh, even though it's not not cool to plug it, but do you have any like? moments where you did that and it worked out better than you could have ever imagined? Um, the, uh, oh, one time I um, had taken a break from drinking and then I went to Anna Nicole Smith's house and then she had um, an ice sculpture that you would uh, pour a shot of Jaeger into the Anna Nicole Smith mouth and then it would come out of her ice vagina. Nice. And you would drink it out of her ice vagina. Very cool. So that's probably like the best. You like my body. And it's <laughs> flowing into your mouth. Yeah. And that's it's pretty cool. And it's um it was and she's like, go drink it, chug it, like next to you <laughs> in a Santa outfit. And it was so like uh surreal and um so funny and fun and uh and we made out. You did? Mm -hmm. Wow. And were you guys really close, you and her? No. No, no. She was just fun. She was just fun. I just, I just mm, mm, kind of, you know, had that experience. But it, that is like the most treasured experience, probably, of 
like hanging out. Like, yeah. oh, you know. But of course, um, she's a she's not with us anymore yeah. because of all this stuff. Because so. of too much party. Mm -hmm. That checks you down. And then you're like, all right, I can't do this. I shit can't do anymore. this, but I, I would have done it if I hadn't been uh, kidnapped and forced to go to rehab. <laughs> I know it's not funny, but it's also like it is funny to adult nap a friend to be like, <laughs> we have to do this. Like we have we to have kidnap to, you. We have to. Otherwise, go. you wouldn't take us serious. They they were right, and they gave me a bottle of wine, and they gave me a blunt, so I got to drink the wine and smoke a blunt on the way to rehab. And uh, yeah, everybody does that. The last meal, like every time I watch that show, Intervention, mm. everybody wants their last meal. They're like, let me just get annihilated before the plane flies. Yeah. But and it's not the best thing. No, but it's but, but I get that it's like, let me get one last hoorah because it'll probably remind me while I'm going there how much I don't want to be on the shit anymore. Yeah. I think that's almost the psychological reason for being like, yeah, go get high before we take you to the place because you're not going to like it. Any By the time you right. get there, you'll be bummed that you were high the whole time. I never had a drug... I never had really a drug thing. I always liked smoking a little bit of pot and mushrooms. I never really wanted to delve too deep into drugs i come from addiction my dad uh is clean now for years but you know spent uh, a high majority of my youth in the uh cook county prison system for mm. drugs so i never really <clears throat> it was always like the thing i knew i wanted to avoid but i do like sauce but as i get older um i just feel it so much more so i have to like temper when i drink now i use it as like a you know, I, I schedule a little bit more mm -hmm. where I'm not, where, because, you know, you know, growing up in our world, it's like you're at a show, you have a drink. You're after a show, you yeah. have a drink. It just becomes so customary yeah. in our culture, in our world, and not a big deal. Mm -hmm. And also we're free. So during the day when Chris and I, my buddy who, who comes with me a lot, you know, we're going to go have a burger and a beer or we're going to mm -hmm. go do, you know, he loves museums. It's like, let's go get a glass of wine and go to a cool museum. You know, it becomes this secondhand you kind of forget how it all adds up and yeah after months on the road your body is like buddy yeah we have so much free time too much too that's much. the problem with um comedy is that you really don't do anything well, do, <laughs> do you have a secret side of you that people don't really know that like you do with it like are you in you know people are like in a gardening or i really i pay, like kevin nealon uh, for people that don't know should look it up is an mm -hmm. amazing artist yeah he's great and uh, people don't know how you know, when I remember he first said he was like, I think I'm going to have an art show. And he started posting that stuff online that he painted. I was like, these are fucking amazing. Yeah, he's do incredible. you have a little hidden thing that you do? Um, I am um, I'm a songwriter and then I'm also a gardener and then I'm also a bird enthusiast. So Ooh. I have uh, 28 bird feeders. I have hundreds of plants, which some of them are, are dying, but... Some are really thriving. None of the birds are dying, though. None so of the birds. Well, good. what's great about the birds is that you get so many different varieties here in Southern California. True. And you get to see the sort of migration patterns, and they, the birds change at the feeders, and the kind of feeders that you put out make a difference, too. So it's a, um, you know, that to me, I've not gone on like a bird journey where I go Let's and- Let's do it for you this year, um, your bird yeah. journeying. Binoculars. I have really nice binoculars, and I do look at the birds outside um, within binoculars. But yeah, I have. Um, yeah, I yeah. Write songs. Look at birds. Look at plants. And gardening. Yep. What's your favorite bird? What are we talking? I. You know what? I have wild parrots that are outside that I hear, but I can't see because every time I go to look, they they sort of start to take off. Uh, so, but I love. Um, right now, we have a big influx of. Anna's hummingbird, which are the ruby-throated ones. Oh, yeah. That very are pretty. so beautiful. Very pretty. So those are really, really special. So those are all over the feeders at the moment. Yeah, it's weird that there's wild, um, there's wild like parrots and tropical birds that you'll see in Southern California. Mm -hmm. In my neighborhood, there is one tree, uh, and I've spoken to someone. It's on this guy's property that hangs over a private area. Um but you can see them and they're all in this tree. And I don't know what kind of tree it is because I'm stupid. But he was like, yeah, this is from one time many years ago, a breeder had let these birds go mm. and they just kind of stuck around and kept moving yeah. through culture and it, they survived. But there was, I'm no shit, there must have been 15 
beautiful colored exotic birds mm -hmm. in the tree. And I was like, they, they only stay in this tree. He's like, oh yeah, they'll come here mm -hmm. for the season and then they'll disappear. But he's like, they're there now and they're so loud. Like yeah. I forget when you go to a tropical place and there's 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 exotic birds are so fucking loud and you forget that you're like, oh wow, that's right. This is, that is, this is, this is like their time to shine. And then they get the fuck out of town. But, yeah. but it is cool to think that like we get, because we're a fake city, you know what I mean? It's like we're a desert town that was built mm -hmm. out of nothingness. You will have, like, we have fucking mountain lions. That, that P-22. Yeah. I forget that we have that kind of shit. Oh, that, they're but they're going to kill him. They're going to get him. They're going to get him. What did he do? He was a bad boy. Well, I mean, you know, it's just like, I think when there's a drought, all of those um, big predatory animals come out and um, they have to come down looking for food and water. So I think we should just what we should do is protect P-22, the mountain lion of Los Angeles, of, of the Hollywood Hills and feed P-22 people that get in trouble. If you're <laughs> a bad citizen. Yeah. And we can't need you anymore. If you've done something just abhorrent. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, then you become meat for P-22. See? Yeah. And live stream Twitch stream it. <laughs> put it on. Put it in the metaverse. Yeah. Just that's people a good getting idea. devoured by P-22. OK. I I think we should start this. I think it's a good idea. I don't idea. know why not. Why not? Um, so I want to say one more thing before we go because I know mm -hmm. you have stuff to do. Uh, on this tour that you're putting together, that you're doing now, you want you're doing when you start back up end of January. I start. Um, well, uh, I'll do Largo here actually the beginning of January, and then I'll go back. Um, oh, I'm gonna do the. Vancouver just for last. I'll see you there. Yeah. Me and Bobby will be there. Oh, good. We're doing we'll just for last in Vancouver, Canada. That'll be fun. And then and then from there, are you and just going to be bouncing there, I'll, around? I'll be going, yeah, all over. So what's your, are you, is it margaretcho.com? Margaretcho.com. Margaretcho.com. Go see her live. Uh, hopefully, if you get a chance to see her on this tour this year. Are you using this to put together an hour? Yes. To film? Um, so hopefully to film. It's, um, it's called Live and Livid. Live and livid, mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Now, because of the change of what's going on in terms of like so many outlets, do you care where a special goes as much as? I don't know. You just don't care. It's like I just want to put it out. Yeah, I would love to put it out. I mean, I, I yeah, wherever. It is funny because now it's changed shape so much. You know, like guys in my age range, like everybody in their late thirties, early forties, YouTube became an answer for all of us. Mm -hmm. And it's impressive to see. I mean, it's not the it's not for everybody, obviously, but. It is kind of cool to watch now comics just taking control a little bit and being like, well, I'm just going to have all the priority. I'll pay for it and yeah. put it out and do it your own way. Not to say the other ways. Like when this is out, I'll have a special out on Netflix January 10th, which I'm excited about. It's my That's first great. Netflix special. So great. I'm excited. I'm excited for the, but the, I want that, you know, in front of, but the, <laughs> that's what I've always wanted. The, but the, um, but either way. I'm excited to see what you put together for the hour. Go see Margaret on tour. Go to margaretshow.com. Uh, I appreciate you being here. We end the show the same way mm -hmm. uh, with one word or one phrase from you. It's either a word or a phrase. It used to be a word. People were like, I don't know. I could do a phrase. So one word or one phrase. You say it into that camera right there. It's going to be cemented in history forever as the way we end the show. So whenever you're ready, one word or one phrase. Lucia. In here... We pour whisk, 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 whisk. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.